Enough said. Let us talk to our brilliant, distinguished analyst. David Bonson, who's got his own cult, managing partner of the Bonson Group and author of There's No Free Lunch. Gentlemen, far away. I, I don't know how over. I mean, over, I think, means 2% for everything. Core, top line. But it's a bit confusing uh, with respect to the Federal Reserve and the economy, is it not? It's very confusing, and the far bigger political vulnerability for the Biden administration is what the Fed is doing to supposedly counter inflation. Their belief that they have to destroy jobs is what is a difficult thing for them to deal with. So far, at least the Biden administration is hiding behind, well, there's low unemployment, which there is. Mm -hmm. But these Phillips curvers don't understand that uh, good employment is not what caused inflation, and getting more unemployment is not going to cure it. The energy side is the real issue here, because I have really never believed that the Fed and the Biden administration were as responsible for some of the post-COVID inflation, the shutdowns and all that stuff. The energy policy, who else are you supposed to blame? They've just refused to let American fossil fuel industry get back on track. That leads to inadequate production, yes. and therefore you higher, have higher prices. Higher than necessary prices, you're absolutely right. China deflation, both the consumer prices and producer prices in China are falling. So if their prices are falling, David, does that bring our prices down? It, look, I, I don't know. I'm just. No, but the answer is I, yes. I, I, I mean, we that. have a 30 year global precedent called Japan. And when they exported their deflation to the rest of the world, it put downward pressure on global growth, including the U.S. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Biden's growth rates, 1.3 percent. Summers calls it secular stagnation. It was 1.6 percent for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Half of our post-World War II average. That is largely deflation being exported, hurts the United States. What is China going to do to stimulate, to counter the their deflation. They're going to try to use fiscal and monetary stimulus mm -hmm. like every other dumb country has done in the last 50 years. Yeah, I know. It doesn't work. I like it. David Bonson, uh, you're a banker. Uh, bank stocks have had a really bad year. Last six months are down 23 percent. The Federal Reserve people now want to raise capital requirements again, which uh, probably more regulation like that is the wrong idea. Uh, what you make of the bank story? It's a really, you, there's a chart. I don't know if the chart explains it. In fact, the chart doesn't look like it explains it at all. But in the last six months, yeah. bank stocks are down 23 percent. That can't be good. But here's the thing. J.P. Morgan's up. And the big bank stocks are up. So you have right now a dispersion among small and regional versus big banks. So it doesn't have the same leading economic indicator effect that normally would be. Really? Do. But this is for all banks. Well, the, with the, an inverted yield curve. That's right. And so how are the banks making money with an inverted yield and, curve? And deposit rates, I mean, they're because having to they're, pay more. Because the big banks are drawing deposits from the little banks. Uh, but uh, The big but, banks are getting bigger. I thought Dodd-Frank was supposed to fix that. Well, yeah, it wasn't. But the point is, um, big banks are in a lot of other businesses. That's right. They're diversified. I think that's what gets them through. That's all right. That. They can also they already have these high capital requirements. The threat to saddle the medium sized banks with the big bank capital requirements. Right. It's just a gift to J.P. Morgan, Citigroup. Right, we're going to leave it there. David Bonson. Thank you, gentlemen, very much.